I'm, I'm really happy right now to introduce you to Suzanne. Suzanne, she's a, um, a writer and uh, um, she wrote the book Labor of Love, Wine Family Women of Piemonte. And she now we have two Italian family here. One is the Odero family. Uh, they're in their seventh generation. And we have, you know, um, the, 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 the um, Podere and Cantino Odero is managed now by Ma Maria Cristina and the niece Isabella and the son Pietro. But they started in 1878 with Giacomo Odero, who was one of the first people that was ahead of his time and he bottled the first bottle of wine and also they started to export to United States in the early uh, 19th century. Then we're going to meet the Pire Figli uh, winery that is led by Chiara Boschis. Uh, Chiara Boschis acquired with his family the um, Pira e Figli in 1980 after, after her university and uh, she was the first woman that produced Barolo in the Barolo village and now she's leading the company with uh, her brother Giorgio. Um, please also, I want to, because we're trying to create a global audience, uh, please also if you are not from uh, Minnesota, write in the chat where you're from and uh, enjoy the presentation. Um, I see you later, okay? Okay, can you hear me now? We. Uh... We had some, some last minute kind of issues. So I welcome everybody this morning. I have uh, some wonderful PowerPoint presentations with great slides. Uh, so first thing I'd like to do is to, to sort of orient everybody. I know many of you have been uh, participating in, in all of the, the different, um, <laughs> see my PowerPoint wants to be really nasty this morning. We've you've been participating with us in these different um, presentations. But here's Piemonte, and on the upper left-hand corner, you can see on the map where Piemonte is located in Italy, in the upper left-hand corner, in the upper left-hand corner of Italy as well. Uh, it is the largest region, uh, land-based region in Italy, second to Sicily in terms of size. Today, we're going to be revisiting the Lange, and specifically, we're going to be visiting Barolo. Uh, I know everybody's really excited about this region. It's a fabulous, uh, wonderful place to visit, wonderful place to know people as well. So you can see from the arrow where uh, we are today as, as opposed to Barbaresco, which is a little bit to the northeast of Barolo. And here you can see uh, the different villages. There are 11 villages of Barolo, as opposed to three and a half in Barbaresco. Today, we'll be visiting just on the eastern slope of La Mora. We'll be visiting with the Odero family in Santa Maria La Mora. And Suzanne, uh, sorry I am told you, I need to Suzanne. share. Sorry, I thought I did. Uh, sorry, people. I'm so, uh, we, we are having some issues today. Um, share screen. Okay. No. Sorry. Still no share screen. Okay, I'm being told upstairs. Ah, yes, here it is. There. Can you see now? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we're here with technology. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. So let me no, no. see. Here we are in Barolo. Here we are in, in Piemonte. Somebody needs to mute in the northeast, uh, northwest part of Italy. And here we are in Piemonte. We show the, the Lange area. Barbaresco and Barolo. Specifically today, as I said, we'll be in La Mora, in Santa Maria La Mora, which is on the eastern slope of La Mora, the highest village in the Barolo area. And then we're going to drop down to Barolo, to the village of Barolo, to visit with Chiara Boschis. Barolo is the only village in the area that isn't located on a hill. So our next slide, then here you can see the little difference between La, uh, Odero in the north, northern part of Barolo, my screen is covering it, and then in the southern part, not all the way south is, is Monforte, but sort of in the middle, but south of La Mora is Barolo. So bear with me for a moment. I would like to introduce you uh, to Isabella Odero. And Isabella is going to tell us today, not just about the wine, which is pretty important, but also about 
the wonderful family, which goes back at least eight generations. As Isabella tells me, uh, we can find in the, the roles, the registries in La Mora going either uh, even further back. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm really having some problems today. Hold on just a minute, folks. I will share my screen. There we go. Uh, I'm going to just turn it over to Isabella. Isabella, I think you're better at telling it, and then I can work these these issues out. Okay. okay. All right, people, leave me alone. There we go. Okay. Isabella, yeah. welcome. Thank you, everybody, for being patient. Grazie mille, Suzanne. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, ciao a tutti. Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, very happy to be here to talk about my family and to be together with one of the greatest uh, Barolo girls we have in our area, Chiara. So I'm very happy and proud. Um, I can tell you a little bit about my family. Uh, so I am uh, Isabella and uh, I am uh, proud to belong to a family who has uh, very deep roots into our territory and uh, in the tradition of uh, the wine growing and wine making of our region. Uh, the first uh, uh, ancestors, the first uh, Odero, of whom we have uh, certain knowledge is uh, Giovanni Battista Odero and uh, he moved to La Morra at the very beginning of 1800s and he built the house where my family still lives today and where we have our winery. He was the pioneer because uh, he also um, was able to buy a tiny little uh, vineyard around the house and he started to cultivate our indigenous grapes. Mostly at the time, the most diffused grape was Dolcetto. Uh, just a little bit of Nebbiolo, Fresa and Barbera, but Dolcetto was most important for the uh, family um, surviving and man maintenance. Uh, if I have to look back to a very long story of my family, uh, I, I can see two uh, crucial moments that really had um, a deep, uh, um, significant uh, uh, impact uh, on the future consequences and the future uh, development of the winery. And the first one is uh, uh, because of a woman, uh, especially. Uh, her name is Luigia Borgna, and um, uh, it was mid of 1800s. And uh, she was, uh, my grandfather still today talks a lot about her because uh, she was really um, a very tough woman with a great entrepreneurial spirit. She was the one who uh, convinced her husband to battle Barolo. So we started to produce our wines, putting them into the battle with our name, with our, with our logo, family name of their own the label, uh, mainly thanks to her in 1878. So before the production was active, of course, but uh, the, we mainly sold uh, in uh, Damigiane, in Demijons. Uh, starting from 1878, uh, the wine was battled, and of course, this procedure allowed a better refinement of the wine. And we started to export uh, uh, our bottles uh, outside of the little borders of our neighborhood, outside of uh, Piedmont. Uh, we still have today a lot of documents with invoices of wine sold to Milano, to Genova, to Zurich, to London. So we started year after year to receive requests from clients and uh, the, the wine growing really became the focus of the family members. Uh, we started to improve a lot our operation and the quality of our wines. Uh, my grandfather also tells me that uh, she uh, used to say, I always spent my life in debt. Uh, as soon as I was able to put some money aside and, I, and to pay a vineyard, I, I used the money to, um, pay una, to buy another vineyard. So she really was very active and she was able in those years to buy many important vineyards in La Morra, 
and the, this is the area where the winery is, is located today, from some Jewish family from Kerasco who wanted to, to sell the vineyard to, to people who had, of course, the financial possibility to buy, but also to people who had the ability and the passion to, to, to take care of the vines. And so this is how uh, our winery started. Uh, after that, we had the First World War, and uh, this lady, she was left alone to take care uh, the, to, 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 to be responsible for the management of the vineyards. She was the one who was working in the, in the vineyards to, to, to take care of the plants, to protect the plants. And um, um, also there is an important uh, thing that my grandfather always tells me, uh, which is the, um, the help of some Austrian prisoners that the Italian army sent to the country areas uh, to help uh, uh, Italian people working and maintaining the production. And so Luigia worked together with four Austrian prisoners that used to live with her. She welcomed them uh, in, in her house and treated them like children, hoping them that uh, the Austrian mothers would do the same to the Italian prisoners in Austria. And uh, they helped her to plant a vineyard, which is today one of the most important for us. And we, we still have and we produce one of the most important wines from this vineyard. Today, this vineyard is named Bricco Chiesa. The offic official name is Bricco, Bricco Chiesa, but we all call it the vineyard of the Austrians, thanks to, of course, in the memory of their hard work. Um, the second crucial moment for my family was uh, after the Second World War. This was the moment when uh, uh, my, uh, the, 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 the mother of my uh, grandfather, so my great-grandmother, uh, she was in charge, she was widowed because her husband died after, just after the war. And she was left alone to take all the decision. And that time was very hard, especially for Piemonte. We also had the civil war. Uh, so not just regular war, but civil war. We had the partisans, so many young men, a little bit older than my grandfather. They died in some of the most important vineyards were of Barolo today. And uh, she was left alone, but she was the one who really pushed her um, sons, her children, not to go away, not to, uh, to go and look for different jobs in the big cities, but to stay in, uh, in La Mora, to believe in our territory. She really had a, a, a foresight, uh, a view of the future potentials, and she always encouraged them um, to, to, to enlarge the properties that we had. She was the first one that uh, allowed my grandfather to buy a vineyard in Castiglione Falletto. So not, we are talking about Barolo region, but not La Morra. This is important because um, a very um, special characteristic of my family property is that we have a very fragmented, very diversified property. This is quite unique. The, generally, most of the producers, they concentrate their vineyards in the village where the winery is located or in another one. But we have vineyards in many, many different villages of Barolo region, not only, also Barbaresco region and Moscato area, thanks to this lady again, because a very old tradition in Italy, which is the dowry, um, when, a, uh, when a woman was married to a man, the family of the woman had to give a gift to the, to the family of, uh, of the man receiving the, the, the woman. And the gift that uh, Maria uh, Badellino gave to the Odero family was a beautiful estate and vineyard in the Moscato uh, area for the production of Moscato Dusty. So we started to produce this beautiful sparkling dessert wine thanks to her. So I have to say that uh, the, the women uh, in, uh, in Piedmont, they are very tough and they have always played a key role in all the family to keep the transmission of tradition. And they really were the engine behind the most important decisions. 
um, also for us, uh, I think it is, uh, it is very true because uh, when my grandfather Giacomo um, took over from his mother, uh, he was always helped by uh, his wife. We can see the picture here. Uh, she was uh, one of the first women in the um, in our area to to receive a degree. She was a pharmacist, and she was running the most successful and the, almost the only one pharmacy in Alba, making quite a good amount of money. But all the money she made, it was com always immediately invested in buying important vineyards. So if we have today the opportunity to work, to work with very important vineyards, I'm talking about uh, Grand Cru for Barolo, even if Grand Cru is a French word, we don't have a, an, the exact translation in Italian language, but very important vineyards, historical vineyards in the Barolo area, it is only thanks to her. And you see a picture of my grandfather here. He was a pharmacist too, because he decided to study pharmacy. But uh, to be honest, at the pharmacy, you, you never saw him because uh, he was uh, always working together with his brother uh, at the winery, uh, taking care of uh, the commercial part and the most important decisions. And also he was very much involved in the politics of the area. My grandfather spent many years to work to protect our local products. So the hazelnut, tonde gentile, the cheeses, the white truffles. And when he was young and became mayor of La Morra and also assessor of the agriculture in the province of Cuneo, he worked so hard together with a few other producers to write the first text of the DOC and DOCG laws. These are the legislation that today um, give the rules to, to, to control our wines. It's the classification of quality of our wines. At the past, no rule existed. And so the hard work of uh, farmers who really wanted to invest on quality uh, was not protected. The identity of our wine was not protected. And he understood so much the need to put some laws, to put some limits, to define the identity of the wine, to protect the uniqueness of our region. And it was very hard because uh, he tells me that uh, at first he received a lot of complaints because uh, the farmers, they were afraid that this was just a lot of work, a lot of bureaucracy. And uh, they used to meet almost every single night and my uh, grandmother was cooking uh, delicious food for them and giving bottom for them and they were talking a lot. He was not alone, of course. He was together with uh, um, uh, the, the father of um, uh, Beppe Rinaldi, Giovanni Battista Rinaldi, with the father of Angelo Gaia, with uh, Angelo Negro from uh, Roero many producers together, they met so many times and they finally brought the text of the DOC, DOC and DOCG laws. This is very important because Piedmont, our area, was the first one to have these laws and then all other regions in Italy, they copied the system adapting, of course, to their areas. So it was a very important work he realized to protect the region. <laughs> Here you can see some of the women of the family. Uh, my great grandmother with me, I was a little child. Uh, my aunt Christina and my mother. Um, my aunt Christina, I want to spend a, a word about her because uh, she is uh, owner with me today of uh, the property. And uh, she really is my inspiration because uh, um, she, um, she, she started to, to take care of the, the family winery after many difficulties with her own father and uh, uh, the brother of her father and also the employees. It was not easy at that time to be a woman and to go in the vineyards and give some instruction on how to best handle the operations. She was not a revolutionary. She wanted to maintain the tradition, the philosophy of our family, but she wanted to 
to improve, uh, to, to, to do a little better. To, she studied a lot of agronomic sciences. She has a degree in agronomic sciences and winemaking and she wanted to add more details of care. And thanks to her hard work and thanks to her strong-minded character and she's very tenacious, um, I think she succeeded because um, starting with the 2006 vintage, uh, she started to convert our property into organic cultivation. It took many years because we have uh, such a complex uh, structure, so many uh, small, tiny parcels scattered in many different areas, and this makes things very complicated. But uh, we are now certified organic in the vineyards. Um, and uh, she added a lot of care in every single process, starting from the vineyards and in the cellar too. And uh, I am very proud of her. Uh, yeah, you can see also in the back, uh, we have some men, not only women in the family. <laughs> this is my gra grandfather Giacomo and my cousin Pietro. Uh, Pietro is working with me. We are the youngest generation uh, working actively uh, at the winery right now. And uh, I like to define him the tornado of the family because uh, he is the one who always gives a lot of energy and always has new plans for the future, which is good. It is, um, I like this because we are historical and traditional cellar winery, but also with a very young uh, energy, which is a good mix, a good uh, combination. Um, yeah, my mother, you can see her, she uh, is a doctor, so she never worked uh, every day at the winery. Uh, she always had a passion to be a doctor and nobody imposed her the decision to stay with the family. So she was free to choose. But of course, she is, we are living in the house you see in the picture. So everybody is so involved in our work. This is not really a work, this is a life. Our life, our everyday life. So, um, Isabella, tell us about your vineyards. I know you wanted to share. So, here's the photo of the vineyard of the Austrians. And uh, I know you want to share a little bit about not just the existing vineyards, but your new baby. So, here's one of your existing vineyards. Tell us a little bit, and then tell us a little bit about your yeah. new baby. I just see only the, the one with the family. I don't see Okay, um, we I should be go. on Rionda. Okay. Talk about uh, Vigna Rionda and then, of course, your newest vineyard. Yeah, so uh, as I was saying before, we are very lucky to have the opportunity to work with uh, important vineyards. And I'm talking about very historical vineyards. Uh, and located in many different areas. You know, the Barolo district, it's quite small. It's composed by 11 villages only, but there are huge differences in terms of age of the soil, composition of the soil, of course, position of the hill and different microclimate, different sun exposure. And my grandfather, when he was young, he understood the importance of uh, um, expressing all different nuances. So he always looked to have differences when selecting his vineyards. Uh, originally, he used to produce only one Barolo, which is the Barolo Classico, the traditional Barolo. So a blend of many different vineyards together. That's why he was always looking to find different characteristics when selecting a vineyard. Vigna Rionda is probably one of the most important vineyards in the whole region. It is located in Serra Lunga d'Alba. You can see the picture now. Uh, it's a beautiful natural amphitheater. Uh, looks like a natural amphitheater. It's a full south exposure and it's very well protected from the winds by the hill of Perno you, uh, it has in front. So it's a warm microclimate, but excellent for vine growing. And uh, a soil which is so poor and so old, so dry. Uh, I think the Barolo that comes from Vigna Rionda really uh, adds elegance and a lot of complexity. You need to be very patient with the wine and with the vineyard too. This one is very special to my heart because um, I am always very emotional when I talk about Monvigliero. This is our uh, latest acquisition. 
we were able to buy this important vineyard in the end of 2017. And this was a vineyard we had always dreamt of because it is located in Verduno. And this is an area where we never had vineyards, very unique, quite unique in terms of soil and microclimate, very different from all the classic Barolo villages. So uh, they offered us the opportunity to buy this tiny, tiny, tiny parcel for quite an important amount of money. And we had to take the decision in two, three hours, <laughs> no more. Wow. Today, so many things have changed and uh, uh, you have a long queue, a long line of people that wants to invest in Barolo. Some of them are international investors and so they can offer good amount of money on the table. So we were so uh, excited and also a little bit anxious because my grandfather always says each one, each generation needs to give a personal contrib contribution. They need, the, each one of us needs to leave something for the family. And so we managed the, the, to, to have the vineyard. And this was the very first time for me to have this negotiation. You can see some images of uh, our operations. Um, uh, we, um, we pick uh, our, our vineyards uh, different moments, of course. They may be very different because they have different characteristics. So there is sometimes during harvest a difference of uh, 10 days from one to the other. And um, we, in our style, we've always been very traditional, which basically means to respect the natural characteristics of the grapes, to be very gentle, not to have an aggressive hand. So what we do is, of course, to focus all our energies in the vineyards, to try to have the best grapes, best healthy vines, to respect the balance of the vines, and then during the vinification process to maintain the integrity of the skins. So like you see in this picture, we, um, we, 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 we have the ferment, alcoholic fermentation with whole berries. So we don't crush them too much. We want to preserve the skin, the integrity of the skin. And no, I, sorry. No, go ahead, finish, finish that thought. No, I think that, um, you know, uh, to, 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 to take care of uh, your vines and to, to let the nature speak, the terroir speak, um, does not mean that just nature will do it uh, alone. It means you have to work uh, 10 times harder because it means that you always have to be with the vine. Like raising a child, you always are with him, uh, but you don't want to be too pushy. So you assist him in every single moment. And this requires, of course, a lot of time, a lot of passion, a lot of sensitivity. And uh, our costs today in the vineyards are really became, have become five times higher than in the past, also because of the organic ch choice we made and the global warming issues that we are all experiencing. Well, Isabella, I, I, I could, as I told you before, with each one of you, I could speak with you for hours. Uh, I've had the pleasure of spending three hours across from you and your uh, grandfather and your aunt and your mother. But uh, right now we'll switch over and go a little further south to Chiara. And uh, we're going to come back to you because I'm sure there's lots of questions and answers. And I think we have our technical issue worked out. So my apologies for the problems before. Chiara, are you there? Yes. <clears throat> Yes, Chiara. I am. Hello, Chiara. Here I was worried about Barolo's uh, problems with the uh, with the uh, uh, technical issues, and here in Colorado, I've had technical issues. So, anyway, I'm going to let you tell us all about your winery in Barolo, Ipira, Efia, and I'm going to bring you on Chiara Boskis. Ciao, Ka Chiara. Ciao, Cara. <laughs> <coughs> Ciao, Suzanne. Hi, everybody. Oh, I feel like a strange uh, uh, sound, but so thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, 
new idea. Oh, Suzanne, I don't know. I hear, I hear some, my voice getting bouncing back. I don't know. Do you have another? Do you have your phone on as well? One second. I have my phone. I'm using my phone. Because okay. If your computer is on it as well, it's going to be a problem. Okay. I'll switch it off then. There you go. Yeah. All right. Okay. I hope. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay, Kiara. Right. Yes, I'm here. Sorry for that. All right. All well, right. Now. So tell us all about your beautiful winery and your beautiful situation in Barolo. Uh, okay, so um, the winery is uh, is very small. It's located in the in the village of Barolo, as you can see from the photo. Uh, we are in the on a on a square in. Uh, in the direction of uh, Montfort and La Mora, so behind, uh, uh, really at the edge of the village. So it's behind, you can see the vineyard, uh, but you can still walk down to the village and buy the milk and the newspaper. So mm -hmm. it's very, 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 very easy, very great location. Yeah, you were saying that Barolo is not on a hill. Well, partially yes and partially no, in the sense that uh, Barolo is uh, very low in um, is uh, very protect yeah very protected because it's only on 300 meters over the level of the sea, all surrounded by the vineyard and uh, of course uh, La Morra and Monforte from the two sides are the two peaks um, that uh, are dominating in uh, in a way but also protecting us, and uh, Barolo has of course as you can imagine we don't have. Uh, uh, we have a great, great uh, microclimate due to this uh, position. Uh, and um, the, the village, the Barolo village is one of the smallest of the 11 villages of the denomination of Barolo. Uh, and is entirely com um, inside the area of the denomination. Uh, this uh, um, is, of course, due to the fact that uh, it's from this little village that uh, originally started really the, uh, the first uh, um, oldest, uh, old, uh, um, uh, some old wineries and uh, is, um, and for example, I, you know, my family also like Diodero was a very old family with the relation to the, to the royal family, supplying the, the, the royal family and the, oh, nice view. Uh, and so um, the, the name Barolo remain attached to this, uh, to this wine. And uh, yeah, the location you, you pointed out uh, is where the winery is. And uh, yeah, my family is uh, is a is an old is an old family uh, of uh, Barolo. This is my mother with my uncle and my aunt. They didn't had uh, any children, so they um, they asked my mother to join. But uh, she was supposed to go there just kind of for visiting and have a sort of holiday and staying for a while. And then she was trapped by the war. And uh, there she met my father that was uh, one of the few boys around because uh, I was always making fun of him and saying that he had no concurrence because most of the, uh, the young people, you can see my father there. I'm together with uh, my brother as well. And so, uh, so most of the younger, the younger guys uh, of his age, he was born in 27. Uh, they emigrated and uh, tried to leave the, the vineyard, the countryside that was uh, synonymous uh, of hard life uh, and, uh, and poverty as well, with the exception of few all the winery, like before, um, you know, the Odero or even my family, they were already old family that uh, was not easy for anybody, but still uh, they, um, uh, they had a, a better position. So, um, 
so my family, uh, I'm also the eighth generation as well, and, uh, but I did my way. So I just uh, choose to be, um, to do things uh, that I had on my, on my mind. So first of all, uh, you know, women in the past were supposed, were not supposed to take over the wineries, but uh, they were given a dowry, like Isabella was saying, uh, normally, and uh, they were lost. Uh, they, were, they were going away, you know, from the family. So they were going to, to some, some other families. And normally they were giving money, so it was very rare to have a property. Mm, and uh, and even uh, to my generation, that was uh, the the normal the normal uh, uh, situation. So um, so my two brothers were supposed to take take over the family winery, but I have always been stubborn, and uh, I really wanted to um, to do this uh, to follow my passion. And I have to blame, of course, in a good way, my parents because uh, they always involved us uh, like all the families of uh, of uh, farmer and winemakers uh, you know even if you are a child uh, we don't even think to uh, to the fact that, that the child work and this is not correct this is correct they <laughs> you need to learn um, how life is uh, how, how life goes and uh, what are the rules of the life so you have to start the better the earliest you start to learn uh, how the we say the ground is low the better is it you know you have to bend your neck and uh, don't don't be lazy so we have never been lazy we have always been involved in uh, all the work in the vineyard or even in the wine and so I started to push hard my family and uh, you know, I had the good luck that a certain moment here is uh, with my brother and my two nieces that uh, in 2010 joined me. Uh, but before, for many long years, I've been uh, alone. Uh, like I was saying to you is uh, I was lucky that uh, this prestigious winery, the Ipira, um, was uh, in a way become available uh, from a, 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 a negative uh, thing because of course the owner died and the two sisters asked my parents for support, for help. And uh, that was the occasion, of course, that they offered to my parents to take over the winery. And because the property, this uh, winery had one actor in Canubi, less than one actor in Canubi, that was such a prestigious thing. Some vineyard like that, like Isabella was saying, were very, was not easy, never, has never been easy to purchase, you know? So thanks to this priority and this friendship uh, and pushing my parents like crazy, I was able to convince them uh, to help me to take over the winery. So we actually, uh, we made a big mortgage because it was a lot of money, uh, even at, back then at that time. Uh, and for sure, I would have never had the, the possibility to get this uh, uh, to, the, to get this uh, mortgage if I was alone. So together, my parents helped me, support me to get the credibility in front of the banks. But then uh, I had to, to work hard, very, very hard. And uh, I have to say that uh, I, I forgot everything else. It's true that I love my work so much that uh, I never stop so uh, so I be, and I've been lucky to go through a period of big big uh, um, big big uh, revolution big big new how do you say uh, something that was uh, was a sort of uh, novelty uh, I, I had the good luck to get together with uh, with other young producer young ex young because now I'm old <laughs> but uh, at that time we were all young and we were the first generation with a certain degree in, uh, in of instruction so um, I was sent to the university which was uh, a great gift my parents gave to me uh, and uh, and of course uh, when you when you study you start thinking how you can get better and uh, and the first idea we got was the fact that we were farmer but the farmer in the past were not considered were considered like the last step in the social scale so we wanted to be 
cool farmer. So not anymore the desperate, the, the last, uh, you know, the less important person um, in, uh, in, the, in, in the social uh, scale. Um, and for this reason, we realized we had to work very hard to improve the quality. First of all, we had to be very good farmer and uh, uh, we are a farmer. So for us, it was easy to work very well in the vineyard to redu reduce the crop, of course, uh, to make less wine, to make it better, and also to invest a lot in the, in the cellar and in the winery to have uh, better equipment. Uh, where back then, uh, the, um, the enology was uh, really uh, getting, giving important advice uh, to, in, the, in the direction of the purity, in the clean, and also the, the system of cold, you know, the temperature controls that helped us uh, to make uh, very beautiful wine that express perfectly the purity of the, of the fruit where they were coming from. And uh, of course, being young uh, winemaker from different villages, we had the chance to, uh, to, com to compare the, the, different, uh, the different situation. And we were amazed by the, the difference of the, um, of, of, the, of the wine. And so the result of the different vineyard. Uh, this helped uh, convince us uh, to work more in the direction of the single crew, the vinification impurity, and for long years we have been pushing very much in this direction, which was uh, very interesting and challenging. But it's true that, uh, uh, and, and back then uh, for me was even more challenging because I was a woman and I was part of a group that was denominated the Barolo Boys and I was the only girl in this group. And so I had to, to work even harder, as you can imagine, to get the recognition and to get the respect from my colleague. Um, and so I've been really working very, very hard. And that's why I'm very happy that in 2010, my brother joined me. So I had the opportunity to, to let him all the harder work and I can con concentrate in what I prefer to do, which is not pumping over or translation or, uh, or things like that, but it's really the vineyard. I love to be in the vineyard. I love to be out there. I feel the connection with the nature. And this gives me all the strength on the, and all the, the passion that I need. It's like a fuel for the engine. So, Chiara, sorry yeah. to, to interrupt, but we've talked about the past, the present with you and um, Georgia. But in the lower right, hand, uh, lower right hand corner, and we'll have to move into our questions and answers because I think they're, we're getting lots of questions. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the future. Well, uh, like I was saying, yeah, I was telling you that I've been working like crazy without even realize that years were running fast. And when I kind of sort of wake up, uh, when finally all the results, all the good uh, recognition were coming, I realized that I was uh, really too old. So the arrival of my brother was uh, really a touch uh, of grace because uh, he, he has three daughters, three wonderful girls, very, very um, passionate and uh, convinced and uh, working hard. So they are still students, but uh, Beatrice, the one on the left, she study enology and uh, she already graduated. She is at the university, but she's, uh, um, she's very, very good. And then um, on, the, uh, on the left side, no, the right side, uh, Elena. Elena, she's the globetrotter. She <laughs> speaks very well English and many other. She has a, a very strong, independent uh, character. Um, she's really adorable and beautiful and, and nice. So I hope that she will take help, uh, you know, uh, the company in the, this aspect that is also very important uh, to represent uh, the winery and to uh, everywhere in the world. And then there is a third one that is not in the picture. Um, that is uh, um, Victoria, she's also doing enological school. So I think that we two enologues, we could uh, easily um, 
uh, co cover all the three important aspects of a winery, which is the winemaking, the vineyard, and also is also important uh, to have uh, uh, all the other work uh, of the um, that are in the winery for promoting. Well, it, it's interesting going forward. It's going to take three women to do what one woman did for the last what almost. 30 years so <laughs> <laughs> but I know I've been dynamic women I've had the pleasure of meeting most of them and um, so I think what we'll do now thank you so much Kiara but we need you to move back a little bit so we can see you better and uh, sit back just a little bit and um, oh. we're gonna move on to our question there we go now we see Kiara uh, we'll move on to questions and answers and I'm gonna throw it over to Romina Romina would you uh, I know you've got a lot of questions out there, so I'll let you handle that. Yes, for sure. Okay, so we have some questions here, and uh, uh, the first question is about the um, green experience. Uh, they want to know who started and is, is only limited to uh, the Lange region, or is where is reaching? Kiara, I'm gonna throw to that answer? one to you because you're one of the pioneers in the in the organic movement you and marina marcarina over in barbaresco so uh it was it was you that really laid the 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 trail blazed the trail so that uh producers like uh isabella and her generation can come along and follow suit i think that uh, yeah probably we have been inspiring i remember when uh um, when many years ago, you know, I was pushing on, in this direction and uh, there was a lot of suspicious about, uh, and sometimes even uh, people was also making fun a little bit, like, you know, kind of laughing under the mustache, thinking that, uh, you know, you were a little bit uh, crazy or whatever. But I think that uh, we find in our um, syndicate, the agriculture syndicate, uh, we found uh, a good supporter. And they actually started this, uh, uh, this activity of, uh, you know, a sort of tam-tam that is very important to, to try to convince everybody because it's, uh, this is the new real important revolution for the future is that again is a, a, essentially a, a, a mental, a cultural revolution. So we have to uh, really go back to the roots in the sense that uh, we have to, everybody has to go uh, to a, a natural world and uh, uh, no more chemical has to be allowed in the area. But to arrive there, you know, we don't want to be like uh, police uh, that uh, you can do this or that. You need to convince the people. To have a real revolution, you need to have that coming back from the inside. So the green experience has been important to lead the producer, to, uh, to take the producer step by step toward a slow uh, recognition of the importance of the organic farming in, the, in our area for many reasons, for the quality of the wine, but for, uh, for health and security, and also from an ethical point of view. So. That has been important. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kiara. Um, Romina? Yes. What's our next question? The question I have is about the global warming. Um, uh, Isabella was talking about the global warming and how everything made it so more expensive, you know, to produce wine uh, for the, so she wants to talk a little bit more about that, the climate change. Yep. Me? Yes. Okay. Isabella. So, Isabella. <laughs> oh, Isabella or, or me? We'll Isabella. throw this one to yeah. Isabella. We'll come back to you. Yeah. We can share. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of uh, ideas about this. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so it's a very complex topic. Uh, surely we are seeing, we, are, we have been seeing in the last years many changes in our climatic conditions. 
one of the most uh, uh, important is uh, the, the presence almost every summer of uh, very high peaks of temperature, even for a short period, but uh, temperature, temperatures which uh, are much higher than what we were used to, and generally an anticipation of the vegetative cycle. Because the winters are milder with less uh, snow and everything starts a little bit uh, earlier. But I have to say also that so far, I think that uh, all the producers of the area, we have learned how to best manage uh, vintages uh, that we are receiving. So warmer temperatures, uh, less rain, uh, sometimes rain happens, but it's quite always very violent and concentrated. And so it's uh, harder to penetrate in the soil. Uh, creates more erosion in the in the soil and uh, it does not stay in the soil. So this is most delicate part to handle, but we all improved a lot and we all, we all uh, learned how to protect the plant, to respect the balance of the vines. Um, also, what is important is that thanks to global warming, we quite always have beautiful weather during the last part of the year, which is quite crucial for us, for uh, the vegetation cycle of the late last um, varieties, uh, the, like Nebbiolo especially, but Barbera too. We generally have uh, uh, good temperatures during the day, fresh cool nights, and this allows a better management of the harvest. So, so far, I don't see uh, huge problems, but of course, we have to modify our way of working. Of course, we have to be present more and to really take care of the vines, like some rows, they are different than some other rows, even in the same vineyard. So you really need to be there more uh, to, to assist the vine, to act more promptly. I think that now, because of global warming, timing is even more crucial than in the past, timing of the operations. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you so Thank much, you. Isabella. Yeah. I have a question for uh, Chiara. Since you're all, you said you like to be uh, in the vineyard, you like to be kind of, you know, in the field. Um, can you tell us, you know, how is what is going to happen, you know, with the people, hiring people that they do the harvest with the, you know, the fact that we're under the COVID-19, how you're going to manage, you know, the harvest with the fact that we are, you know, in a pandemic? Yeah. Okay. Then first, uh, first thing is, if you want, I can walk in the vineyard in the back of my house. Yes. If you want, so I let you see the wonderful panorama that uh, we are having from uh, from there, even if Barolo is very low, because yes. I have it uh, on my phone. In the meantime, I'll ask you a question. So yes, of course, uh, the work in the vineyard is a big issue because uh, uh, in our area, we have very high, high, um, it's a, a very high work for per hectare, you know, so it's uh, the, because of the hill, um, we have to do a lot of work manually. Uh, so uh, it's a, a, around the world, there are maybe vineyards that can be managed with much less uh, hours. So for us, uh, first of all, is a high cost, of course, uh, but also we're losing her. She's on Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah. We see, we see what happened. We lost her. She walked out, her iPhone dropped off the Wi Fi and didn't go over. So while Kiara is coming back to us, uh, Romina, you have another question for us? Uh, so far, no, I mean, I think we've covered a question, but we have a special guest. We have, uh, you know, the grandfather, Giacomo and Christina, that would like to say uh, something. So uh, I, I think they're here. I see their name. So if they want to unmute themselves, they can uh, speak. So okay. let's see if Giacomo and Christina are here. Ciao, sto facendo una. Mi sentite? <laughs> Chiara, wait just a second. I think you, you dropped off. So before we get to Christina, now that we got Chiara back, let's let's see what's going on. Christina, uh, hold on. There was, there was a moment in which the connection was a little bit low. 
but because I'm walk, walking into the vineyard, and now, so you will see, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it takes, I will not go to the top. No, please don't, <laughs> please don't, we don't have that much time. <laughs> exactly, but I want to just say that uh, I personally solved the problem in the fact uh, with the people, because I have, I hire a person, and uh, in the meantime, I'll show you. Uh, I hire a person to uh, oh, see, to work uh, uh, full time for me. Okay. You see my mind? Hi, dear. <laughs> and uh, so I have people that I can trust that are always with me. Uh, and of course, for the harvest, uh, I need some extra help and uh, I'm uh, working on the side of having, for example, uh, sommelier. Normally I have people that come from other parts of the year and uh, they want to do experiences and they help us. Or in the past uh, you could have also the help of, of cooperative. Mm -hmm. uh, or things like that. So this year I found a, a group of artists that uh, are going to come and help me for the, for, the, for the harvest. I don't need a lot of people because I need the right people. So yeah, but yes, it's an issue in general with the COVID. There was a moment in which uh, uh, the worker were not allowed to come and we have uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, foreigners, especially mm -hmm. from Macedonia. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chiara. That is Look. a beautiful view. Ah, so we, get to see, we get to see ah. the first day of summer in Barolo, thanks to Chiara and her energy to climb up the hill. So It's late, you, so we oh, have just a little nail of light. But at least you can see my... My beautiful village. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, get back, flip back over to Christina, mm -hmm. and uh, and Mavi and Giacomo. Christina. They are here. I see them. They have you know. So if they, let's see. Unmute. Yes, I'm going to put them in the spotlight video so they should be able to, you know. There they are! <laughs> great, great. What a treat, what a treat to see the three of you. Everybody, this is a global, wonderful experience. Thank you so much. You're seeing one of the icons of Barola right there. Giacomo Dero. Grazie mille, grazie mille Giacomo, grazie. Hey, Mavi, ciao, ciao. <laughs> she doesn't have her, uh, her mic. She's not muted. She's muted right now. Yes, you know, she can, uh, again, you know, they have to unmute themselves. If someone else, let's see if we have, um, yes, if we have any other question, please, this is the moment to write that in the chat. Uh, otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. Well, can I just, one quick, one quick moment, since we're a little bit late starting. Um, I would like very much to just flip it over to John Rittmaster for just a moment because I know people are going to say like, okay, where can I get these wines um, in, in uh, Minneapolis or, you know, elsewhere in Minnesota, you can check with MGM liquors and uh, MGM wine and spirits and liquors and ask them. Uh, I know that uh, I believe Chiara is represented, Ipira is represented in, uh, Minnesota, but not Odero. But if you would like to uh, obtain some Odero wines in America, John Rittmaster can help you with that. So I'm going to throw it over to John, one of the Piemonte pioneers from Walnut Creek, California. John? John? He was with us a minute ago. John, unmute. Unmute, John. Dude, how about now? I got you. Hi, everybody. Ciao. I'm so excited to see Isabella and Chiara, and I saw Mavi and Christina and Giacomo. Man, this is a wonderful Sunday morning, Father's Day, out here in California. So nice to see you all. Uh, uh, as uh, 
and Suzanne, as, as always, and Romina, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, you guys have done it. This has been a terrific, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, so, so uh, exciting for me. And uh, I'm a little uh, teary because uh, I should be in Italy right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my flight obviously was canceled. Nobody wants to see Americans in Italy right now. <laughs> uh, I still have tickets for October. So uh, fingers crossed, I'm hoping to come. But uh, uh, our relationship with, uh, with both Chiara, uh, our relationship with Chiara goes back 25 years now. And Chiara's nearly as long, right? We were a lot younger then, uh, but uh, uh, we've been, lucky enough to sell their wines from the very, very beginning. So we kind of think of ourselves as Piemontese pioneers as well. So anyway, uh, what they're doing is very important uh, I, uh, to create this market and to see this young energy uh, is, is very exciting for everybody. So we're in a, in a wonderful moment. It doesn't seem like we're in a wonderful moment, but we are in a wonderful moment right now uh, in, as far as the development of these wines and their international exposure. And uh, for that, we're very, very grateful. So Suzanne, Romina, very thank much. you very much. Yes. If you uh, ever want to buy these wines, we, uh, Chiara's wines are coming to California in September. Uh, the Odero's, I think a little sooner, uh, although <laughs> we never get enough. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> no doubt about that. That's a, that's a topic for another day. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again. So, John dropped his email over on the chat and uh, you can always email me at arnace at me.com if you have any questions at all about the producers, about obtaining the wine. Uh, and, and I hope you'll join us again next week. So Romina, I'll yeah. send- I have two things, you know, as I'm saying, like everything, you know, we're wrapping up and people write in the chat, you know, I just have to say something. I have to say that Odair is, re is represented in Minnesota, okay? So um, they have to check, you know, the North Loop and also uh, the Sunfish uh, Cellar, okay? And right. also uh, there's a question that came that they're asking about, you know, the best time to uh, visit um, the, uh, you know, vineyard and the cellar. Okay, uh, I'll, I'm gonna answer that one like I did last week. Um, every day, every day is a great time. No. Uh, seriously, I, with my tours, I do not bring anybody between the 1st of August and the middle of October because the, the producers are really focused at that point on, on harvest. But some people really like to go in September when the weather is gorgeous and also in October during the harvest. It's an amazing thing to see. Uh, you know, more and more, it used to be that people were there in the autumn and in, in the late spring, but now it's really 12 months out of the year. My favorite time to be there actually is December, just before Christmas, because all the, the Christmas decorations are up and everybody is, is kind of slowed down now, uh, fermentation's over, harvest's over, everything. And even though there's a little bit of energy before Christmas, um, there's a lot of, in the, in the wineries, it's great. In, and I highly recommend that time of year. Uh, January is a little slow, February's, beginning of February slow, but it, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, the weather is best in, in the summer and into all the way in, through October. So, and of course the truffles, the white truffles come in at the end of October all the way to Christmas if we're lucky enough. Perfect. I think we covered, you know, all the questions. So I want to thank you everyone for being here today. And, you know, again, happy Father's Day, you know. Thank you, Father, for doing a wonderful job with all your families. We appreciate your hard work. And thank you, Suzanne. And thank you, uh, Isabella and her family. And also Chiara and, you know, uh, with her family too. So uh, remember the last uh, um, episode is going to be next Sunday at 12.30 Southern time. And we're going to meet Giovanna San Martino di San Germano and Andrea Costa. So this is, will conclude our series, Labor of Love, Wine Families of Piemonte. Thank you so much for being here today. Grazie mille a tutti e ci vediamo la prossima settimana. Grazie. Grazie, grazie. Ciao, 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 gr
Tchau, tchau. Tchau. Bye, Suzanne. Bye, bye. Bye,